Hey everyone, Spicy Toast Gaming here. Hope you're having a great day. Hope this video can make it a little bit better. Time for our second video in the monthly challenges. We'll be doing challenges 11 through 20. So first up, we have Fiora here with the mini boss of Sejuani. Two stars. That is a lot of rules. So round end kill all damaged units. All people, all players start with 10 mana gems. Grant a random keyword to the first unit the foe summons each round. And then deal three to all the players damaged unit units. This doesn't really matter since they're all going to die anyways. So that's kind of irrelevant. All players starting with 10 mana though, that's pretty good. I think I might break out the Echo with Chemtech Duplicator potentially. Let's see, what can we make for a Echo build? Right now we're using Guardian Angel, which we do like. I think let's maybe swap this out for a Duplicator. And I think we will actually keep the Guardian Angel since he's probably gonna die at some point. So Stalker's Blade, Guardian Angel, Chemtech Duplicator. How are we feeling for this? Actually, I think I'll probably just go for Set. Set is very good for Chemtech Duplicator. So I think I'll we'll actually just use him and just try to dominate because of that guided meditation. All right, support champion, Elise, not too bad. I think let's go for the Elise and kind of remove or use her as a removal spell. Although that formless blade could be pretty good. You've drawn 16 cards. So the Elise could definitely work. I think we might actually go for the Neela if we level her up and she deals one damage to all units that would essentially kill them because of the star powers or the powers plus the formless blade. So let's actually go here. Uh, Risky Venture is not bad because it's gonna give us some coin generation and it's gonna go off twice. So I think let's actually get that. Eye of the Storm is not too bad. I think let's use one more reroll here. Not really getting anything too great. Let's try a reroll over here. I think we'll go for that uh, Shadow Totem because it says when I'm summoned, it does its effect. So immediately summoning two will actually trigger about security. So that's actually pretty good. And I think let's just move on. So Sejuani. All right, let's get rid of this. And I think, yeah, we can hold on. Actually, let's get rid of the Risky Venture. We want to reroll a good amount so we can try to, there we go, get our set. These old eyes still see far and clear. So that is six. This deals three damage. So even if they play Sejuani, we would be able to kill it. The one issue is that even if they attack with their sentry, they'd be able to damage our unit, which would kill him. Although we could just try to go a little crazy and end this round. Oh, that's going to deal seven each. Yeah, I think let's still go for it. Huh, they're not going to block it all. Alright, I think we can just take this hit. It's fine. Although... That's actually not too bad. We won't attack with our set. We don't want him to die. We'll just try to set up and end this turn. Alright, so they didn't play anything. I think the bout security will be pretty good here. I guess we get first action. Uh, yeah, let's still just hold off. Give them more opportunity to play stuff. 
Piss me face. If they're out there, I'll spot them. All right, what are we sitting at for mana? Uh, I don't know why, but they got rid of the counter a little while ago, which is pretty annoying. All right, let's just attack. We have enough. GG. Alright, uh, Reckoner's Mark, probably not the best. Let's go for the Barrier. And try to grab a Item Chest. Yep, that'll be pretty good. Getting some more of those. Alright, Fiora with Time to Duel. Uh, let's re-roll both of these. Nice that we have our set. Pit Professional, pretty good. Huh, so they already have her. Uh, we'll just play our set. Want a piece of me? Line starts here. All right, so we're gonna try to play the face breaker. We don't want them to be able to attack twice. Sometimes they have abilities where like Fiora can challenge your unit. We want to make it so that if they do that, he still has barrier, so he's fine. Right, let's damage her a little bit just so that probably could have used my coin there first but at least Fiora will die alright let's start off with stunning both of these Now we want to try to spend as much mana as we can without using up our coins because they're going to automatically or already overfill. Alright, we can use this here. Completely fill our mana. Alright, we're pretty close to getting our rally. I hate that they got rid of the counter, it was so handy. Right, we can just attack like this, doing as much damage as we can, and we're going to try to rally with the Zephyr Sage. Uh, I guess they will be able to kill some of our units, but it's still worth it. Alright, so not quite enough to end the game, sadly. So one bad thing is our set is now going to die, and we are out of cards. But they're also pretty much out of cards, and we're very close to winning, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. They didn't challenge our elusive, so we're still pretty much fine. Like, yeah, these will die, but it's okay. Nice, we have our set. Big night. Give him a show, huh? I always do, boss. Let's try to use this here. Let's see if we can get our rally this round. And all of them here to see you, of course. There we go. Alright. GG. Alright, that worked out pretty well. With Guided Meditation, if you have a maxed out set and Chemtech Duplicator, he does work pretty good for that modifier. Alright, Challenge 12, 3 star, I think this might be our first 3 star, but just up against Darius, we have Bandle Magic, so we summon the Bandle Tree. Round start, Heal the Foes, Nexus 3. So pretty general powers that we can kind of just ignore, 
Uh, I think I'm just going to go for Gnar as a solid champion that should just be able to rush them down without too much of an issue. Alright, let's see what we get for our support champion. Uh, I think I'm actually fine with Fizz. I like being aggressive and kind of just using this as a removal spell. So this is actually tough. The champion item chest, while that's good, normally the Honored Lord also gives you an item for your champion. So I think this bottom track will actually be better. Yeah, last breath rally. I mean, hopefully our print... Our Nar is not going to die. Shadow Totem. Fury. I think let's go for the Shadow Totem. Alright, item chest. Pokey Stick's not bad, giving us a bit of sustain. Let's try for some rerolls, though. This having tough would be pretty nice. Alright, Darius. A uh, pretty solid opening hand. Uh, we will try to play Fizz first, even though they might have some blockers. Oh, they don't. Nice, yeah, we get our Nexus damage down, buff up our Gnar a little bit, trigger all of our star powers. Uh, we will miss out on our Ephemeral copy. Won't really do much, but... At least we'll be getting our... Uh, stacks of impact on our Gnar. Nothing can stop me. All right, we're just working on building out our board. There is our one Nexus damage. They don't want to do anything else, that's fine. I think let's actually play a Tusk Speaker first. I'm a little worried, they do have some stuns they might pull that, which could be annoying. So, still not quite enough damage. This would be helpful, though. Yeah, let's go here and here. Alright, that's a bit closer. So, because of that 40 health, we weren't able to quite end this round, but... Still not too bad. Here to watch the bloodshed, sir. Here to win the war, soldier. Right, trigger our damage once more. Let's go ahead and stun that Darius. And yeah, let's go ahead and actually use this up. Alright, our impact alone will be enough to end the game. But we also have some solid Overwhelm and Elusive units. Alright, GG. Alright, that wasn't uh, too bad. The Enlightened Knowledge, just make sure you are rushing down the enemy and not doing little poke damage here and there. And Bandal Magic, not really a big deal. If you want, you can maybe try to win with the Poro King. But really, pretty general challenge right here. Just play a solid champion and you should be fine. Challenge 13, Zed, so aggressive early. Player spells cost two less, their units cost one more. They're going to summon a Warlord's Palace. When it counts down, it's going to steal our Mana Gems, so that's not great. So it might be a little tough against the Zed, but I think I'll play our Janna for this. 
since having some built-in cost reduction will be pretty nice. Uh, Found Fortune, don't know if I actually want to play with that. Scourge of Stash, Chemtech Duplicator. I think I might actually switch this out for the Disciple of Shadows. If we could just get her on the board round one, then we're going to do very, very good. So I actually haven't used this before, but let's go ahead and test it out. So Janna up against Zed. All right, support champion. We would hope for something with a little bit more spells. So this would be three and then go down to a one. This actually is not bad because it does have that stun component to it, which could be really good against the Zed. This also isn't bad. I think let's actually go here. If we could play this around one, it could give us two cost reduction on our Janna. And then the Cosmic Bind would actually be pretty decent. All right, let's go for the champion item chest. I guess let's go for the scout. Potentially once we hit elusive, that could be pretty nice. Item chest, one more damage. Uh, focusing crystal could be good, but this is gonna be a really expensive card anyways. So mana deposit, honestly, all of these are good. And mana deposit will be great if we draw this round one. If we don't, though, it's going to be a bit of a pain. Also, we want more copies, and so we're trying to go for a spells-based deck. I think let's go for the gotcha, but all three of these are very good. All right, Zed. Uh, let's get rid of this. We're actually going to hold on to all three of the rest. They have your attack token, figures. Alright, they used up all their mana for that. I think let's actually just use the Howling Gale here to kill their unit. Alright, so if we play this, we'll get two cost reduction on our Janna. Let's get to work! But they're probably going to play, yeah, there's Zed. In the darkness. I'm going to attack with the Ephemeral and hope that they don't block. Although if they do block, it kind of doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll just attack like this. We can at least kill their Zed. So yeah, struggling to get our Janna on the board, which we kind of figured might happen. Pledge yourself to the shadows. So this will draw a spell, which will be actually quite nice. There we go. I think we're actually going to let that hit our Nexus. Because if we play this, we should be able to play our Janna for free. Yes, wonderful. And yeah, we can updraft both of those. Alright, so we have her on the board, and we're pretty close to that 6 mana. They've been able to do nothing because of our removal spells. And now everything is majorly cost reduced. Will I be able to play enough to level her up? Probably not. Although if we play one of these, the other one is going to draw another follower. Uh, I think we'll just do our scout attack now. Before they have a blocker down. Granted that a blocker would also block my elusive.
Together, we shall watch over those who need us. All right, so let's just attack and do as much damage as we can. You cannot escape. All right, not too bad. The Zephyr heralds the scroll. Without a sound. Let this draft guide your hand. All the animations. Alright, let's just go ahead and kill their Zed. A gentle breeze to ease your birth. By my winds shall the downtrodden rise. I rally the mighty wind. Tales of our past are seeds for our future. And let's go ahead and kill that as well. Guide your hand. Goodness. Citizen. All right, so we'll just attack next round and uh, GG. Not too bad. All right, so not too bad. Being able to just use our removal spells to take care of the Zed. Definitely want to play a spells-based deck here, and one that's going to be able to not get overwhelmed by the Zed. So both Master Yi and Lee Sin could be a bit of a toss-up if you have them maxed out. Then you'll potentially be able to surprise the Zed with your combat tricks, but if you're a little bit lower level, it might be rough. Going with a Annie, though, would probably be pretty solid if you aren't trying to save her for later challenges. Now, this is a little early to use up your Annie if you have, like, a maxed out one. But if you just have, like, an Annie at two stars and a pretty low level, this would be a good opportunity because you'd just be able to stun their Zed every round, potentially. Also, you just go for a champion like Varus. Just any of the spell-based champions, you'll be fine. Just be careful of that Zed and don't get overwhelmed early. All right, challenge 14. Two bosses, both fairly aggressive. Lots of removal. Targon card costs one less. Vanguard Lookout. Uh, I don't really want to use up Aurelian Soul or Diana, or Yumi for that matter, so there's only really one left, and that is Leona. Uh, yeah, I'm happy with that build. So yeah, let's go ahead and use our Leona. We should be more than strong enough for this. All right, support champions. None of that really looks great. Ah, Diana, nice. Let's pair up together, that should be good. So this is already an expensive card, making it more expensive isn't great. This being a 2 cost though, 2 cost 4-4, four, four. that's pretty solid. Let's actually get some of these. I think let's re-roll. <laughs> Moonlight, that would be pretty funny. The arena wouldn't be bad, but I think let's actually just do a re-roll. Uh, we don't really want that with Poro Fluff. Yeah, not really getting anything too amazing here. This could be good, but I'm not actually that worried about their champions. I don't necessarily want this filling up our board. So I think I'm just gonna leave here, but this is solid. If we were going up against Aurelian Soul and they had like really big units, then I'd probably grab this. All right, Gangplank. Uh, let's get rid of a couple of these. I think let's use this and immediately get rid of one of their units. And sure, let's keep them from stacking up that powder keg too much. Right, let's get our Ravoon on the board. Yep, totally fine. We're fine with ending these rounds as early as possible. We're just trying to get to that six mana point. First light illuminates the land. Behold the sun's holy light. Alright, here. 
I think we will do a little bit of damage. So let's just attack, kill some of their units, get rid of their powder kegs, damage their nexus a little bit. And then on our next attack, we're going to try to end the game. Alright, Sunhawk, very good. Also, get ready to sit for five minutes because of all the animations. Uh, that's the worst part about Leona. Uh, let's go ahead, use this. Alright, so I think this stays zero cost. I don't think it's just for the round. And then let's play some of our other units. We're just trying to fill out our board so that we can attack and end the game next round. We will not suffer unbelievers. They will not escape punishment. Alright, so we'll just, yep, end here. And now we're just going to stun everyone again and attack and end the game. Alright, this will be the last thing we have to do, I think. This should stun their whole board, what's left of it. And then we'll just attack and absolutely obliterate their nexus. All the stuns. Alright. GG. Don't eh, really care about any of these. Let's do a reroll. Uh, I guess regen? Sure. What do we have? Anything? Yeah, we wouldn't mind getting rid of that card, actually. We're not going to have any problems winning, so it's more important we just draw the cards we need, so getting rid of this will be the most helpful. Alright, Swain, uh, let's get rid of this here, and I think we're happy with the rest of this. We could play our Soldier first, then play our Diana. Help us ramp up either f even faster. Remember the objectives. The few for the many. Alright, wonderful. So we're already at four mana. We can play our Leona already. Uh sure, let's Yeah, let's get this on the board. We'll at least get our Archangel Staff starting to trigger with our Grand General Counterplan. Alright, so we'll kill their strongest unit here. They shouldn't be able to kill our Leona, and with that regen, we'll go back to full. Well, actually, I say that, but will the Suffer... Okay, good. Our regen reacted before the suffer. I helped build this empire. Didn't really pay attention to our Diana actually getting hurt. Oops. Daylight, everlasting. So Lady control all that her want touches. Uh sure. Let's go ahead and 
since we have the mana, go ahead and trigger this. bad we'll just pass and we'll probably just end up winning this round because we're just gonna buff up and stun their whole board and an open attack and there's nothing really they can do to stop this i mean i guess they could try to stun us Alright, so we could play longer, but we already have more than enough to end the game, so we'll just attack and GG. Alright, pretty easy quest. Honestly, all of the Targarn uh, decks are very strong, so just pick one that you think will be best suited here. Since they're all pretty strong, you shouldn't have too much of an issue, and the Vanguard Lookout's not really that big of a deal. Alright, challenge 15, 3 stars, 2 bosses, including Viego. Again, spells cost two less, units cost one more, and then deal one to all units, then grant the foe's units one power, or one health, that is. Don't think we've actually seen this one before. That's interesting. Would be pretty good for Tom Kench, and I think I might want to actually pull him out for this. So double, double Berserker's Buckle and the Troll King's Crown. He will be pretty expensive, and we don't have that many spells, but I think with the red as her lips will be decent, and then we still have solid amount of spells that this will be beneficial. All right, support champion. That Dune Keeper could be pretty solid. Yeah, I think let's just go here. Getting that one extra mana could be quite nice since our unit's gonna cost so much more. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. Let's actually go ahead and grab that. And let's also get the Citrus Courier, because that would be pretty good as well. Alright, here we go. Alright, we want our Citrus Courier on our opening hand. Uh, let's get rid of both of these. Alright, we got our Doom Keeper. Wonderful. As long as he can stay alive, that is. The desert by my side. Right, we're just going to attack with this here. Alright, perfect. So they took one damage. That means they should... Oh, right there, Fury. Never mind. Alright, they're wanting to end the round. Totally okay with that. Alright, so we can already play our Tom Kench, pretty good. He can start generating those acquired tastes, which will be free. Which means he can just start eating all of their units. Come on in. Alright, so I could capture that, yeah, have a one cost. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So we get some extra stats on top Kench. And we'll be able to play it immediately again. Alright, looks pretty good. Yeah, we'll just attack like this. So yeah, they won't be able to play their Viego. Interesting. Uh, actually, this will be pretty good. We could have this strike our top Kench. Get some more scaling. Huh, they want to end the round. Interesting. Well, if it ain't the 
All right, we'll just open attack. And that'll be game. That makes you the guts. I big fella. All right, GG. Uh, far sight to make sure we get our Tom Kench in our opening hand. Not bad, although it's going to be a while before we can play him, so it's not that needed. Tough and Giant's Belt are both good, but if we could get some cost reduction, regenerating also good. Come on, give us a little bit of cost reduction, please. All right, sad. Uh, we'll just go for a strike, draw one. Uh, I think let's try to go for an item chest. Uh, yeah, I think this will be good. Getting some more crusty codgers. All right, Fiora. All right, again, let's re-roll most of these. If we could get our one unit with that double... Mana Carrier or Crystal Carrier, that'd be nice. Looks like that is not the case. Sad. At least we're already controlling the early game and our units are just going to keep scaling up. Ah, there you are. Uh, we're going to have to pass, sadly. Which, so this sucks because if we play it, he's going to immediately attack and kill it. If we don't play it, there's a good chance they're just going to end the round. Yep, there it is. So that really sucks. Uh, oh well. The Emperor commands, the land obeys. Right, so attack like this and this still won't quite be enough, so that actually won't work. All right, so just attack like this, get some damage down. Interesting. I mean. I'm fine with that. By my honor, you must die. All right, let's get some extra stats here. Perfect. And then we'll just capture their Fiora. I guess we could have played this first so we could get one more stat from the extra spell. Where there's a will, there's a meal. So we could attack, get some good damage down. Not enough to end the game though. We could play Fiora, which would be a little bit amusing. Sure. Alright, let's go ahead and get rid of that. It's too Alright, let's play this, and then we should be pretty close. Yep. GG. Alright, so haven't seen this before, but that is very strong. Definitely works well for Tom Kench. Uh, another bail that actually one of you guys brought up to me. I'll showcase it here. So this is what the person suggested to deal with some of those modifiers. You have Teemo, you have the Armadillo Shell, and then the Double Berserker's Buckle. Now the Armadillo Shell was a little bit more important for the other modifier where it did two damage to you. 
Here though, you're able to reduce down that damage to nothing, but you're then able to scale up so much. And since you're an elusive champion, you can play your champion round one, they're gonna start scaling like crazy and the enemy's just not gonna be able to handle this massive elusive unit. Uh, so this is something you could do. Teemo, since he's elusive, would really be the best for this sort of play style. And it's fun that it's really mostly your relics doing all the work, your relics like countering and taking advantage of the modifier. So if you didn't have Tom Kench, this would be something else fun that you could try. But yeah, Tom Kench would be the best here. All right, challenge 16, round start, refill all player spell mana. The foe's attacking units have one power, and it is just misfortune. So I think this is one that I'll use Echo for. Uh, let's go back and get rid of the Chemtech Duplicator and grab the Lost Chapter. This is a really fun Echo build. And the Lost Chapter is not as Im important since we have the Nautical Nuisance, but it still would be nice if we use our spell mana, then play a, another Echo, and he can refill it. So let's go ahead and try this out. All right, support champions. Uh, none of this really... I mean, one cost of Bully Bear is kind of funny, and he would play three Relentless Storms, which would actually do decent damage. So you know what? Let's actually... <laughs> let's actually go here that would be not too bad, actually. All right, so this would be interesting. Sure, let's try this out. So all of our spells are fleeting, but when we play a spell that isn't Final Spark, we make a Final Spark. Didn't know that could pop up for the monthly challenges. Uh, one less cost for Echo. That's pretty good. I'm a little greedy, though, so... <laughs> Let's try to re-roll free attack. Sure, let's go for mana deposit. All right, misfortune. All right, let's get rid of the practical perfectionist and actually hold on to the rest. All right, we have our volley bear. Although I guess we just shouldn't bother really playing anything. Right, so let's go ahead and play this here for our final spark. Alright, if they play something, they did. Wonderful. I'll shoot the wings off a bilge wasp. And sure, let's attack and get a little bit of damage down. Alright, not too bad. Fortune favors the bold. Yeah, let's play our Echo since we'll be able to play him for free. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, let's go for a, another time trick. And sure, let's just cast that again. And great, another Volley Bear. This one will actually have some stats, though. Alright, so let's play this, let him get his skills off. Kill her. So far, this is going pretty well. Just out of reach. I got gotcha, you, little guy. Could have sworn he said something. I do my own stunts. All right, so this might be GG. Yep. All right, that was uh, pretty easy. It is just Misfortune. She's not that deadly of a boss, especially not when you're fighting against the Aurelian Soul one. So just pick, again, pretty much any of the spells-based deck, and you should be fine. Although, really, pretty much every champion can be benefit from this power. So just pick a decent champion, and you should be fine here. This one's not too dangerous.
That being said, don't pick that slow of a champion. Because of the Embrace the Shadows, Miss Fortune can go pretty wide with her board, so don't give her time to get wide with the board and benefit from that extra damage. So a decent champion, but not a slow one for this challenge. All right, challenge 17, two bosses, but it's just one star. All players start with three spell mana. Round start, give the foes weakest unit 3-3 three, three this round. I think let's go ahead and play Echo again. We didn't get the benefit from him that much last time, so let's just go ahead and dominate here. All right, support champion. Teemo, that should be fun. Yeah, let's go ahead and grab that. So I think to speed up games, I'm just going to buy some items from the shop instead of continually re-rolling. Now, if you're wanting to take a bit more time, going through and re-rolling is probably better because things here are so much cheaper. Uh, Grifter's deck, that's, yeah, not bad. All right, Sejuani. All right, let's get rid of the drop border and the Aeronaut. Great to have Fallen Feline in an opening hand, though. So we can play Fallen Feline, get that stacking up, create another Fallen Feline for free. Alright, let's see what we're gonna get. <sighs> Iterative improvement is tempting, but yeah, let's go ahead and grab Echo. Alright, pretty great opening hand. So this time trick is free because it's a created card and the Grifter's deck, so that is pretty awesome. Let's just keep doing more and more time tricks. Ah, oh, this one wasn't free. But let's just keep filling our deck with them. Uh, yeah, let's go right here. Alright, some solid damage down, and our Echo is pretty close to leveling up. And we've just filled our deck with a whole bunch of free... predicts. That's a little annoying, but not that big of a deal. Oh, right. I remember this. Future is whatever I make. So we probably should have waited and done that after the shatter, so we could have given him a little bit of stats. Oh well. Uh, let's play a time winder here to discard this. And, oh, we can't kill our own units with this. That's sad. Never mind. I was going to try to kill our Teemo so we could get a rally. Uh, sad. Chrono Break, wonderful. Oh. Sure, let's go ahead and play this. And GG. Echo, Augment, pretty good. Philosopher's Stone, pretty good. Although, Echo might die, so might run out of those stats. Sure. Quick Strike. If he dies, it's not that big of a deal, because he has the Guardian Angel. Wonderful. This is exactly what I was looking for. At least, well, something for the time trick. Alright, Gangplank. Alright, let's reroll most of these. Huh, no cat. That is a little sad. Uh, let's actually copy that. And I think let's just kill that again. Alright, not too bad. I th 
think we will actually play this. Okay. Wanna make me a few extra boards? Yes! I, I mean, sure, you know, whatever. Alright, so we can attack like this. I think. Actually, we want this one to die. Um, we're actually, we're just gonna leave the powder keg. They can stack it up, doesn't really matter. Yeah, we'll leave it for now. Uh, yep, that's actually totally fine. We got pretty lucky there. We don't really care with those dying, especially that one. But we can just open attack with our Echo. If it ain't my favorite time traveling genius, punk buddy. Well, I'd be weirded out if I wasn't. No, deja vu isn't what it used to be. Let's just play as many of these time tricks as we can. Shuffling as many into our deck as we can. Alright, so this should be GG. Yep. Alright, so that one, really again, not too bad at all. And these are both pretty general powers. This is a one star, so it's not going to be difficult. Just pick a okay champion and you'll be fine. One stars are normally a joke, and especially since ne neither of these powers are very difficult. You shouldn't have really any struggles here. Uh, three star though for Viego. Each player gets a mana gem, that means they're going to get Viego out fairly quickly. And then if they get a attack token, they get a powder monkey. So... Not a terrible set of powers, but something we definitely need to be careful about, especially with them getting Viego out quicker. I think this is going to be another one where I'll break out the Gnar, because he can just end games pretty quickly, especially with that extra mana. So that shouldn't be too much of an issue for us here. Alright, support champion, what are we going to get? None of these are great, but I think I'll actually go here specifically for that Lulu. Just so that if they do get their uh, Viego on the board, we'll just play Le uh, Lulu, capture him, and kind of resolve that issue. Uh, let's go for the champion item chest. Huh, this would be interesting. All players summon three golden narwhals, two, two, deal two to all allies. Interesting. I think let's try a reroll here. All units have vulnerable, sure. I think we'll be able to make better use of that than they will. All right, champion item chest. Let's actually give him overwhelm. Sometimes we can attack with his non-leveled up form, and so getting that overwhelm can be quite handy. All right, Viego. We will actually hold on to double Lulu because that's gonna guarantee we draw our Gnar. Granted, this isn't gonna be the best opening hand. There we go, that's that's decent. A warrior needs a drum beat. Uh, we can play our one cost uh Gnar. Bring the spirits. Turned out to be a pretty good start after all. We just need to build up our board and uh, get a good attack in. Uh, Alright, not... well, not that big of a deal like, other than the fact that they're going to be healing up from it, which isn't great. They might try to kill our Tusk Speaker, but that's probably fine. Yep. Let's 
So yeah, the main issue here is that they're going to be able to play their Viego, and we do not have quite enough damage at the moment. Also, we don't really want to attack into that full amount of mana. We're going to try to bait them into playing their Viego, and then we're going to counter with a Lulu. So let's play a Wallop here, and we'll still have enough mana for a Lulu. This is the only thing we have. Other than playing Lulu, that's not burst speed. That's why I guess this was fast. We could have we could have played a Pokey Stick. Still not bad. Uh, not a bad job. Now they shouldn't have mana for their more annoying spells. All right, not quite enough damage, but we'll just play the Pokey Stick and then that'll be it. All right, nice. They're going to try to drain, but we'll just counter. GG. All right, so that one really not too bad. That being said, though, this can get out of control very quickly. You need to be either ending the game before they play Viego or have a plan for Viego. So you, in that last run, specifically just grab Lulu as a counter for Viego. You might want to do something similar. So again, there's going to be a pretty broad challenge you can use a lot of champions with. This isn't really determining who you need to play. And you can even play some slower decks here. You just have to be ready for their Viego. So as long as you go into the match with that in mind, you should be okay. All right, next up then, challenge 19, two stars again against Viego and Nautilus. When any player draws a card, says cost of three, and the Chilling Prophecy, they summon a Frozen Thrall. I think let's actually play Volibear here. I haven't tried it with Magic Number, and that should be pretty fun. So I think I actually prefer the Disciple of Shadows over the Starforged Gauntlet. Let's go ahead and try this out. Although... Uh, I say that, but since his cost is going to be three, if we go to three mana, we could just play him round one. So even though I generally like this better, Starforge Gauntlets will probably be better in this scenario. All right, let's see. None of these seem great. Kindred, Aatrox. This could be fun because we could maybe get Aatrox to be three cost, and that'd be pretty broken. And then... The Darkened Staff with Scout, pretty good. So yeah, let's actually end up getting this. Uh, that's actually not too bad. I think let's just get this, though. Use a reroll. Well, we don't have meta for that anymore. But having this have Storm Column is not bad. All right, Nautilus. Let's actually try to re-roll our Volibear so that we have a higher odds of drawing him at the start of the game so we could play him at the start of the game. All right, wonderful. They don't actually have anything for us to hit or kill, but that's fine. So there goes most of their Nexus. <laughs> I'd be close. I think let's play a Babbling Bjerg. Perfect, they didn't play anything, so GG. Oh, Volibear is a fun champion. Uh, Shadow Totem, not really going to help us. Colossal Hammer could be good, but Quick Strike Blade <laughs> could really help us end this game quite quickly. Alright, Item Chest. These are okay. Again, okay. Looking for something amazing. Didn't get it, though. Oh, well. 
All right, Viego with Sovereign's Domination. All right, again, we're going to reroll our Volley Bear in an attempt to draw him at the start of the game. Now, this is going to be more of a 50 50. We might just get Aatrox, although Aatrox at the start of the game, too, wouldn't be bad. But we get first action, that means they can't respond to what we're going to do. And we're about to get rid of like half of their health. Alright, pretty solid opening. I will definitely agree with people that uh, Volley Bear is pretty fun with Magic Number. Oh, I forgot that because he's Titanic, you'd get a strike off. That's awesome. Completely forgot about that, to be honest. Again, he's being very shy. This is like the second time in a row this has happened. All right, we'll just attack. And they shouldn't be able to do anything. Well, I guess if they block the Aatrox, they'll potentially be fine. Let's go for our Bjerg. Alright, they'll probably be able to block, but we'll get more Sickles. Well, at least we now have Overwhelm. Alright, that's fine. Sure, let's just kill our own units, including theirs as well. So many sigils. All right, GG. All right, that was definitely pretty easy. Nautilus, especially very slow deck, and Viego can be a bit slow at times. The magic number, great if you're playing any of the like mid-range champions, so like Alawi, Gwen, that sort of range, then it's pretty negligible. It's like, okay, it might help you, but you can still just play those sorts of solid champions. But this is also a good opportunity to play some of those more expensive champions like Volibear or Orn, maybe even Nasus. So pretty fun one. This is just a two star, so it wasn't too difficult. So if you have one of those more expensive champions, you want to play them, this is definitely the opportunity. All right, challenge 20, the final one for this video. Guided Meditation, pretty good. Monkey Munitions, when the foe attacks, they summon a Flame Chomper, challenging the player's strongest unit. That'll be annoying in addition to Yasuo stunning one of our units as well. But Guided Meditation, I think we'll just grab our set again. You could also use like Lee Sin here if you wanted. Both of them are actually good champions when you use the Chem Deck Duplicator. Yeah, I think we'll just go like here. All right, support champion. LeBlanc's pretty good. Annie's pretty good. I think we will go for that LeBlanc. Uh, let's actually go up here because the item chest. Free attack. Barrier's tempting. Let's, uh, let's go for the far side just to make sure we get him. <laughs> this would be a crazy amount of draw. I do actually like the Shadow Totem for this card. Alright, yes, well. Alright, that looks pretty good. We know we're going to draw our set, so it's not that big of a deal. Although, instead of playing set, we could do something else. 
Okay, that's fine, I guess. Like, slightly annoying, but... No cuts towards back of the line. Invitation only. I go where the road takes me. Aren't you the one with wind technique? I don't know how close I am. Not quite close enough. At least we're killing two of their units, including Yasuo, so that's pretty big. Now, probably would have been better to play Set there, although to be honest, if we played Set, they would have just recalled him as well. Ionia does have just like some of the most annoying cards in the game. Don't worry, boss. We're watching the line. Attaboy, speak. I think we'll actually play this so we can block their elusive. Other than the fact it gets stunned. Let's throw down. Alright, let's go ahead and just kill this here. There's not any annoying powers I'm forgetting, right? Nope, looks like we should be good. But it's Ionia. They have annoying spells. I dare you. Hold tight to your branches, Pimon Ha ha! your worst wind! Yeah, literally, <laughs> Ionia is just the most annoying deck to play against. Or region, I guess. Forgets, but the black rose ah, didn't mean to use up the like rally token nice already. Work. I hate that they got rid of the counter. Keep it moving. Welcome to the arena. I'm trying to feed my family. <laughs> uh, you're such an annoying deck. Alright, not a big deal though. We'll just stun them again, spend enough to rally this round. Good, they didn't open attack, I was a little worried. Uh, let's stun these two. Actually, let's stun these two. Since we have a stronger unit, they might not attack. Slightly annoying, but we'll just kill their units. So we're not actually going to keep these, at least, probably not. Because, yeah, we still have to play enough to get our rally. Looks like a full house. Nice work. There we go. Alright, let's obliterate this. Why don't you sit this one out? Alright, GG. Screw you, Yasuo. Alright, so that was annoying just because it is Yasuo, but Guided Meditation, use any of the Chemtech decks and you'll just blow through this. So, Leona, Janna, Set, Lee Sin, Master Yi, 
Nami if you wanted. There's a lot of champions that with guided meditation, they're just absolutely broken. Or you could just go for like Volibear again and have him absolutely dominate. A lot of different options. Just be aware, this will probably be an annoying fight, but that's just because it's Yasuo. That's it for this set of monthlies though. I hope it helped you out. If you appreciate all the work I put in, definitely like and subscribe, and I hope you all have a great day.